Well, it couldn't get any better than this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here on Cigar Saturday. I'm Tom Fisher. We have uh, Matty Rock, of course, joining us from Sanders there. How's it going, Matty? I'm hanging in there, my brother. Much love to you. Much love to Mark. Mark, yes. appreciate you uh, taking the time to come come be on the show today, my brother. That's I'm right. I'm excited to be able to join you. Yeah, it's really a pleasure. If you're a fan of, uh, and, I, and if you've had it, I know you have to be a fan of the Pappy Van Winkle fermented uh, family reserve cigar, then you're meeting the man right now behind it. It's Mark Ryan, uh, owner of L.A. Poche Parique there. He's in he's in uh, Chicago right now, but you're based in Louisiana, aren't you? Yes, I am. That's where the Parique factory is located in St. James Parish. But I came in this weekend for the largest pipe show in the world at Chicago. Yes. So I'm having, smoking cigars and smoking a pipe, and I was smoking a lot of pappies. Smoking a lot of happy. There's nothing quite like this. And again, uh, I've I've already surprised these gentlemen, but I was able to hunt really really well. Now, I fortunately I, I have one of these from when I last saw you, but I did find a little 15 year old to pair with it. Oh man, you're killing me. Uh, well, I wish if you were here, I'd pour you some. Mark, he's mocking us, Mark. I don't even sure. drink it. You sucking that thing out of the bottle. <laughs> it's a little bit left. Enough for this. I've already poured myself some, but tell us uh, again. I think a lot of people do know what is the uh, what is this stick and and how is it? You know, the short stories of how it's made, and then we'll go into the details. We'll ask, we'll have questions and all that. Well, the thing that makes it unique is we took dark fired tobacco from Kentucky. We shipped it down to the Brick Factory in St. James Parish, Louisiana, and we fermented it like Perig. So what that means is, is we got the we got the leaf down there. We hand stemmed every leaf. We tied them into bundles, roughly a pound, and we we put them in a used oak whiskey barrel. Wow. And put it in high pressure, and it ferments anaerobically under high pressure. It actually bubbles and you know creates like a foam. We then remove the tobacco minimum three times during the course of the the, the twelve months and reverse the order put it back under pressure, and then we hold it for 12 to 18 months before it's sold. And just super premium tobacco to begin with. And then with that unique process, it just creates an, an amazing, an amazing taste profile. I mean, not only do you get the smoky element, you know, from the fire cured, but you get the pre-fermentation notes. So you get like a fermented fruit. It's like an olive note, a pine, pine nut note, all without chemical flavoring. It's just from the the complexity of the the elements that are evolving that leak and it ferments. And not many people are able to make that work, but you guys have these master blenders that made that work. And the other thing that, that makes that unique for you all is, I mean, you know how much I love you guys. It's like family. Well, I only do that for you. Okay. The dark fired free process. Love you, buddy. Our, our smaller building exclusively to that and exclusively for sale to Drew Estate. So, yeah. so you know, my, you that's for an amazing car. I mean, amazing. Yeah. There's there's nothing quite like so it. People. I said the uniqueness that you get in the smoke. Um, when people talk about multiple layers of, of flavor and what it offers and, you know, what does everybody always say when you smoke a cigar? Hey, what can you compare and it's and it's one of those smokes you you really can't. And it's not just saying hey because it's it's Drew Estate and it's this and these are our buddies. It's you actually can't compare it to anything. You know that's like somebody on your side, Tom, saying hey what what can you compare X to? And and, and every now and then there's something that there's that's out in the marketplace that's that's not comparable, right? That's so, right. No, it's it's yeah. there's nothing like this. I mean the flavor of this. The first time I had it, I mean I. I began to understand it. Now, after talking with everyone, I'm, I'm understanding it more and more. It's just, it's so complex. As you mentioned, you were talking about flavors. I'm not sure I've even thought about the olives, the fruit. Uh, what's really, I mean, the barrel, obviously, the used Pappy uh, Van Winkle barrel, used barrel bourbon. What's, 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 what's happening there with the Perique style? You know, you mentioned we use these oak whiskey barrels. And, and I think there's an element of flavor that's induced from that. Um, but it's the anaerobic high-pressure fermentation that creates all these complex flavors. 
<clears throat> LSU did a study on it, and I've got the report. Of anaerobic fermentation under the Greek process produces 400 compounds with all these wow. different flavors. And the thing, the thing that makes this cigar so unique, it's not just that tobacco, and it's just the balance is perfect. I mean, there's there's no bite on the tongue. You don't get the ammonia, and the construction is fabulous. I mean, look at it and you realize very few of the of the rollers make these cigars. This is an every convict in here that this cigar. I mean, it's just brilliant. I mean, the, the blend, the execution, the construction, it's just a stunning product. I'm, I'm proud and happy to be able to participate in it, to yeah. be honest. I really am. The, and that described the anaerobic, uh, the process. What is What does that mean? For you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people watching understand tobacco, but what does it mean? Anaerobic means not exposed to air. So what we do is when we pack them in these oak barrels, okay, we first use a railroad jack that has a handle it. You see, I can do that. And then that really compresses it tight. Okay. Once we stabilize that in the barrel and we, you know, we get it up close to the top, we put what's called a screw jack. Okay. But it's not just a jack on the tobacco. Um, imagine the circle that's the top of the barrel. You cut it in half and we call them two half moons. Right. So what we do to get that anaerobic is we put those half moons in. You know, and that covers the tobacco. And then we put some boards on top, and then we put the, the jack, and it's in a press, and then we press that tobacco down. And it activates, and there's, it's nothing, but it's fermenting its own juices. I mean, it's hydrated, so we can move the tobacco. Because people are saying, oh, man, it's got all these flavors. What are you adding to it? What are you doing? I'm like, nothing, man. It's a natural fermentation. It's a natural process. So it's got all that flavor without chemical additives. That's the ticket. Yeah, there's there's tons. What do you what do you taste on it, Maddie? What do you like about it? Like you said, you get there's so many different tastes because it, because of all the different aspects that got into the cigar. So you get like that hickory smokiness. You get the sweetness. Um, you get that raisiny, almost a molasses. I don't even like saying raisin on this one. I'm gonna go more towards molasses complexity. I think Mark probably agrees on that. You get that molasses in there. Um, cedary notes, smoky notes. Uh, the natural sweetness of it on the on the, on the front, not only on the front end but on the back end. So there's so many different nuances on this cigar that you get that just isn't. It's just not available anywhere else. Because think about everything that's going into it. I mean, it's more. It's you know, you also have science. There's there's science taking place in this. You're having you know, what what's one of the most renowned things on the planet that people want, and it's in our hands. It's Pappy Van Winkle. So you put all those things together, then the extra love that goes into it, then the extra yeah. craftsmanship that goes into it. And you have something that, you know, after this is my 30th year smoking, after 30 years, I can tell you there's nothing that I can compare this to. Say, hey, if I wanted to smoke something that was like this, what can I smoke? And I, you can't. And once you smoke it, you really understand. Uh, you do say if, if you've never retrohaled, you take it in and you, out through the nose, and you're going to even get more, uh, more complexity, what really went into the cigar. And then you'll truly start to understand just how special it is and how special the smoke is. And like I said, it's a process that's just outside of Mark. There's there's nobody else who does the process. So that's telling you an awful lot about what went into the product. Yeah. That's yeah. The okay, because it's only done there and it's done with that high end dark fire. It's if it's not the rarest tobacco in the world, it's gotta be close to it because the only volume produced is what we make for you guys. So it's, it's remarkable. And the labor is so intensive. I mean, you can imagine hand stripping every leaf. Then we tie them in bundles. When you put them under pressure, it's hard to get the tobacco out. You open that up, it's a solid mass. And I'll, I'll get a hay hook, put it in four places, bring it up. Because we, we remove the tobacco minimum three times during that year. We work the tobacco to loosen up, put it back in the barrel in reverse order. Very time consuming, very labor intensive. So that, that's another thing that's remarkable about Drew Estate. They're not looking for cheap ingredients. They're looking for the best quality they can provide to their customer. That's how John, and that's how everybody is with Drew Estate. We're quality oriented. And it's like John said at the event. He said, we love what we do. We love the tobacco. We love the cigars. We love our customers. I mean, it was a presentation by John on that. And what's his favorite word is, is experiential, right? So what did you do with this stick? 
you created something that's very experiential. It's different. Um, it's, it's different than other things that are out there. It presents a whole new way to think about tobacco and things that you can do with tobacco and using quality and everything else in this formula. It's just, just wild. A reasonable price. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Like in that. And, you know, we had some people at our, at our booth during the event come up and ask what the price was. And I didn't know, but the Pappy girls did. And I was like, really? That could be three times their price. Literally. And people would think it's a value. I mean, it's a real cheap cigar, but it's not real expensive. But the value is remarkable with what goes in. It, about how many hands, right? Of all the extra pairs of hands that are available in this process, right? They say a hey, hundred pairs of hands has gone into the uh, rolling out a stick onto the market. Now add what's being done here, and even more so. So think about what's gone into the production of one of these sticks. Yep. Absolutely. So much has gone into this, and again, uh, hopefully, you know, if you ever. If you're a bourbon fan, you get a chance. If I'm hosting a tasting or maybe you're at a tasting, you get a chance to try the Pappy. I'm loving the pairing. I mean, it is magical to really be having your work and this work together, Mark. It's really amazing. It's it's just divine. There's, there's nothing like it. But if you can't find uh, a bottle of Pappy, I mean, it is a search sometimes, and, and the prices out there of the Pappy or on the secondary market or even, even at liquor stores can be very high. You can find this, and you can – you can be you can be experiencing part of that and, and a unique part of that, right? Exactly. And you know, let me let me clarify. I said thank you for that compliment, but honestly, I can't take credit for the craftsmanship of that cigar. I mean, I provide that rare tobacco, but the master blender that figured out how to balance that and get the flavors to work, not conflict. That's a craftsman there, man. Yeah, that was the skill set that pulled that off. Yeah, and Mark, Mark. Market- and modest because the truth of it is it's the craftsmanship of everybody that makes this special everybody firing on all cylinders and like i said you have you have amazing products uh, amazing people and amazing craftsmanship across the board and you're not gonna you know you're not gonna be able to come come up with a product like this uh make it work that's right you impressed me so much at the event although i was always impressed with your estate stuff everybody that works for Drew estate is top shelf I mean, just exceptional people and love what they do. They love the company. And it's just, it's palpable when you go to one of these barn smokers, the incredible people that work to make this company great. Nothing like it. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. And and just, and seeing your, your, all's, uh, your all's experience there, it was, it was really a, a smaller version to really educate people. I mean, that's part of the beauty of the barn smoker is to actually really get to see what goes into this. And you, you brought part of that uh, to Florida a few weeks ago. It was remarkable what they did to set up that booth. A, they had a booth separately set up for the Happy Van Winkle. And not only did they have a barrel there that showed what we put it in, but they had a simulation in back with miniature barrels and miniature presses. So I could say, this is an example, but imagine it scaled up. And this is how we do it. And then I would explain the technique. But the fact that they went to that expense to compare that to educate the consumer, yeah. I mean, remarkable what, what these events do for people. I mean, and, and you give out, you know, so many things, all the cigars and everything out. And to me, um, you couldn't buy the value just for the education you get. Right. And yet you get the swag, all the cigars, all the food, all the drink, all the camaraderie. It's like, Man, I'm getting five times my what I paid for this out of it. I mean, you know, everybody's we're all, friendly. We're all together, especially with the pandemic. So, yeah. um, beauty of these now, even more than ever, is to go back out, to go back out there, uh, be around everybody, and just like Mark said, it's just it's just a full experiential thing. You get to do everything between the tobaccos and the food and the people, and like I said, and you go there and you learn. So, if this is something that you love and you've never been out there, um, there's always something new you're going to be here. like someone like Saj been doing it for 30 years. You're always going to hear something new. And that's the beauty about this because there's always that, that evolution going on within the industry, new things coming in, um, new ways to do things. And again, you bring, you bring new people into your fold that enjoy this passion with you. Right. So I think that's, you know, super important. And that's such, that's a, such a great compliment to the event you do 
because and I've always felt just with my company too, the better educated your customer on what your product is and the components, and the elements and what goes into it, the more satisfied they are, the better understanding they have of, of what goes into it and the greater appreciation for the commitment, you know, that goes into that. And I think that's real important um, so that people know, you know, what they're getting. And that's, I don't see anybody else doing it, but you guys. And right. of that, if you look, why are they, why is the event here? This company is so remarkable. They've decided we're going to honor the farmers that contribute tobacco to our cigars. In order to do that, we're going to have an event in their backyard, and we're going to recognize these people from the cigar. Who else does that? I guess there's a love that you guys have, man. It's just. Oh, you guys. Sorry, I'm getting a little New Jersey. <laughs> Hey, like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maddie, what'd you do? You caused some trouble, man. What happened before this? They may be watching live. They were just wanting to. <laughs> and speaking of, New, and speaking of New Jersey, you know, you know what? I think we need a New Jersey event up here. I think we need a Pappy comes to Sanjas because what you haven't seen. Oh, yeah. Is in the back, just outside in the back alone. There's room for what, 250, 300 people? So Mark's like, ah. I don't know. We'll see. We get some uh, get some pappy, some bourbon out there, some of the sticks. Again, oh, I see, go ahead. I that. Yeah, I'd love that. Oh, it'd be great. I see Chad and several folks asking about uh, how the collaboration came about. When when did this all start coming about, and and how did it, how did this come about? How did the uh, how did this come about? It's an interesting story on that. You know, John's always coming out with new innovative things. And he'd come out with that line that you have with the dark fired cigars. I think one of them is my Uzi weighs a ton. Is that right? Yep. Started out with my Uzi weighs a ton, correct the Mulats. Mm -hmm. And what an interesting cigar. And I had just a couple years earlier, done the dark fired and fermented Greek for my company, but also for Mike McNeil and Mary McNeil and McClellan Tobacco Company. And I saw John at a, uh, a trade show. I said, John, I see you doing these cigars. I got an interesting twist on that, man, because I took the dark part in Santa Louisiana. We processed it like Greek, and it made something totally unique. And his attitude was, hey, dude, let's meet and talk about this. So we had a meeting at one of the trade shows in Vegas, and I had, you know, samples of everything and an outline for how to present it. Because John's very formal in terms of getting things accomplished you know, when you're executive, you don't want to waste their time. So I was very organized and that helped. But I had the samples, you know, and some suggestions. And when I went through it, John was like, man, this is unique. This is a, a really cool tobacco. We're going to figure out how to make this work. And that's how it's was just because I love you guys. And he's been a friend for a long time. And it's just his friend. I went, and go, hey, man, I got something you might want to try. And he dug it. And that's how we got started. She said, Trade show. Yeah, come on up in the room and let's talk. And then after that, it was like, let's go down and have, have some drinks and some good dinner. And that's how we, we came up with the concept. Incredible. And I know a lot of people are asking. Of course, we see a lot of Pappy fans, a lot of Bourbon fans. Thanks, everybody uh, who's watching this on Bourbon Blog Live Cigar Saturday. If it's your first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel you're on. That way you can catch our shows every week. Uh, but no matter what, uh, I know you're curious about the flavors of this and really just how well it's it's pairing. I mean, I often say, you know, Pappy, I mean, there's there's really nothing like it. I mean, there's there are 15 year old bourbons. There's 20 plus year old bourbons. There's really nothing like this with the fruit, with the barrel, with every element that's well balanced. That cigar really matches that, too. You have the fruit, you have the barrel, you have boldness in this, but yet there's softness. I mean, there's really just like a good bourbon is is well balanced this is well balanced it's perfectly balanced and the tobaccos are aged so well because i'm a tobacco guy i can always tell when i'm smoking a cigar if the blender took some shortcuts since you know and there's maybe too much ammonia or something's a little too youthful the color's off no issues with this and i'm a tobacco geek man when i first tried it i was like oh my god what has it done this is the best cigar i've ever smoked it's it is. unbelievable. It is so good. It is so good. Those barrels as they come down to you. What's that story like? Where? How do they? How do those used pappy barrels come down to you? What happens when they get there? Take us through that as we're visualizing. Get them down. You know, it's, it's shipped by truck. You know, and get what they can deliver to us. 
And um, in our processing facility, we have an area where we keep the, the empty barrels. And as the tobacco comes in and we start processing, we pull those from the inventory and we start. And you got to clean them up. You can rinse them out. Um, and actually, you know, since you ask, you know, they've got that char. Mm. First, we have a special type of shovel and we actually scrape the inside a little bit. Yeah. Because some of that char can break loose and contaminate the tobacco. So we clean that out good. Then we hose the barrel down. Actually, I try and fill the barrel up about halfway with water to make sure it's tight. Because you don't have a barrel that's leaking. You use all these precious juices when you press the tobacco. But that, that's basically it. I mean, it's it's a lot of work, but it's it's simple work. It's dirty work. It's dirty work. And there's you know, some bourbon that's trapped in those barrels? Is that... There is a little bit. Little you bit. get uh, what's they call that? The angels share or something. Yeah, there. some residual. Yeah, that's it's stuck there, there in the barrel. Obviously, they don't leave it in there. You know, as priceless as it is, but it it, it infuses into the wood. So I, I think it does impact a little bit of flavor too. And it's in that barrel for tell us again how long? About twelve months. Usually twelve, 12 to eighteen months. Wow. It, you've got to really keep it in there to get everything working right. And um, we do most of the churning in the first eight, six to eight months. Yeah, yeah. Because that's really actively fermenting, and you got to be on it quick so that um, you keep everything at the same level of fermentation. So you got to get it out and you know put the put the leaves in in reverse order. Right. It's, it's not an easy process. That's I about see it. I mean, it's you have to see the product too. When you get to see it, it's just wild. It's like this sweet. Oh. We, you know, we're talking food elements, right? But it's funny because it really is right. it's just sweet. You know, you saw Tom when you're when you're out in Florida, it's about this sweet, gooey, you know, you're just like, yeah, yeah. You know, so you, you get that food experiential element that you pop into there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and this could really go. I mean, I'm thinking about this with not only the, I'm again, I'm having some Pappy 15 with it, but also uh, think about culinary aspects. I mean, this could really pair well with food, like you're saying. I mean, what, what would you pair this with? Or what do you all pair it with? Well, you know, my, my for me, my love of barbecue, you go something out there, you do some uh, something like either a, a pork belly, um, there's some 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 dry rub ribs. Because for me, I'll do the dry yeah. rub sauces on it. This this will be my sauce, man. It's got everything in here. But then you have the subtle the subtle dry rub on, that you get on ribs would be great. Uh, a couple of bogey would be something great to have with this. So I stick with those elements. You're never going to go wrong with a cedar plank steak. Because if you do something like a cedar, a cedar plank steak with this, then guess what? All those woodsy notes in this cigar are going to pop more, right? So those are, you know, those are some of my. Exactly. That's a great idea. Yeah. No, I, I, I love it. So, okay, some good questions. Um, how many times? Uh, Chad's asking how many times can you use can use one barrel to use it several times? How does that work? Actually, we get the you know we get the empty barrel. We put all the tobacco in. We ship the tobacco in the barrel. Oh, you ship it. It goes to the actual product manufacturer. It's got 500 pounds in the barrel, which is a lot. It's hard to get 500 pounds in that barrel, man. It takes a while to get it, so it won't pop the cap. So the manufa the manufacturer the finished product gets the barrel. And they, you know, can use it for whatever purposes they want. Some people return them to us. Right. right. Yeah, it's just the one one shot deal. And most all the barrels, I, I would assume that you get, you're able to use. Most of them stay intact. You're able to use those once they come down from Kentucky. Absolutely. Yeah. They're all there. They're all ready to use. I That's see okay. people asking about where to get these. Uh, let's talk about that. I know part of them are... Pappy, Pappy Co. Where, it's, where, the, where, where can people find these? Pappy Co. is one place. So there's certain sizes that are available that are right. exclusive to Pappy Co. So if you go on pappyco.com, uh, you'll be able to see what the exclusive sizes are there. Um, there's some shops that you're able to get it at if you go online. You could look at uh, some of the retailers. I'm signed if had here before. There's other, uh, other, other, other boutiques that have them. Shops, uh, a couple of the boutiques like Sanjay's usually do a better job. Of, of procuring them than some of even the big box shops, but you're able to go there. So my first thing is always go down to your local, uh, your local brick and mortar shop, see if they've got them in stock. Um, and like I said, then if not, you go, you, you go online and look, you go to Papago and then you'll see what sizes are exclusive to who. Um, and then of course the, the big thing is, is, is being able to get them in hand. 
uh, one can imagine that just as Mark was telling you, it's, it's a hell of a process to get these things to market. So not always the fastest thing to be able to keep up with supply and demand is something that requires all these extra steps. And as we know, during COVID, uh, you know, they, they're saying the numbers that 11 to 13 percent more cigars were sold during COVID because people had more time. It was obviously something you could do on your own in a hobby um, and really learn more about it. Right. So that went up to 11 to 13 percent. Now you also have to do the reverse in those numbers. You were able to produce much, much less product because people had COVID protocol to follow. Right. So when you're taking away, when you're adding 11, 13 percent, think about on the back end, there's certain places that were dropped by, you know, 40, 50 percent of production. What you could be able to push out because of following protocol. So what I will tell everyone is if you can't get them now, uh, you know, be patient. Um, they're out there. Like I said, check out Papico, check out your local brick and mortars, jump online and, and see what some of the big boxes like uh, like our friends at Casa and Monte Cristo have. And then uh, you should be able to find something there. And if not, you know, you don't need to worry. They're, they're, they're being going to be done the right way or it's not going to be done at all. Yeah. Okay, that's that if I may, Matty. Yes. Because when I was manning the booth at the Orlando event, we had a number of retailers come up. It wasn't just consumers. And every single one of them said, man, we sell happy cigars in our store. Like, so we love the hell out of them. And yes. all our customers do because they see how enthusiastic we are. So what I would add is, if you go buy your regular cigar shop and they don't have it, you know they're going to have to do a state or they ain't open. Right. I say, hey, man, you got to add this to the Jewish state line because I'm ready to buy and you bring it in and you're going to sell them like hotcakes. Get them in. And I'll bring them in for you. Assuming availability. Now, Maddie would be able to address that more than me. I don't know how many of these these they were able to produce. If they can meet all the demand if all these shops want them. But boy, if you can get them, you got to run to get them. Man. I'm telling yeah. you. They are, they are so splendid. And uh, again, Somewhat rare, you can find them. Might be a little easier to find these uh, than a bottle of Pappy. Maybe you never know. But uh, keep looking. No matter uh, you know, if, with, no matter where you are, keep looking for them. I actually see uh, some good folks there on our, our YouTube offering to trade a, a few for something. Uh, they're trying to share the love. I see. Uh, yeah. Maybe I trying to help Pappy. somebody. Pappy. Tom. Might be doing the Pappy for Pappy. They might might be. Be. That, could, that could happen. Hey, if you haven't already, we have just a couple more minutes left. Like this video, share it. Uh, whoever likes and shares this and we draw your name gets that bag of that coffee from our good friend Shad, who's see Shad's also watching. I know he's a big fan of what you do there. And go to bourbonblog.com forward slash coffee. Uh, I'm going to get that link up in just a moment. But uh, like and share this. We're going to draw for that uh, that bag of coffee. Uh, again, Perique, Perique style tobacco. This goes back. I mean, people have been using this in Louisiana. How long? How long has Perique style tobacco been there? There's some debate because um, I've seen different references. The fellow that discovered the Indians doing it was Pierre Chenet. And some say he discovered around 1780, others say around 1824. But he knows that the Indians were putting this tobacco and hollowed out tree trunks. And what they would do is put another stump on top and then run a, a big tree limb across this way, which became the lever. They'd notch it in another tree. And then they had hang weights on the back, which then pushed down on the tree trunk inside the empty trunk and actually compressed the tobacco in the in the trunk. So he used it. And then this uh, Acadian guy observed it. It's like, hey, man, that's some good stuff. And he um, started crossing instead of a, a tree trunk in square boxes. Okay. And then in 1905, uh, one of the processors, Mr. Roussel, industrialized it and put it in the oak whiskey barrels. So since 1905, it's been in oak whiskey barrels. Whiskey barrels. And, and, you've, and you've been doing this for quite some time yourself, too. Bought the factory in 1905. And one of the reasons was I had started back, back then I had to roll your own manufacturing company. And I used Perique in a couple of my blends, and I learned that it was going to shut down. The family was aging out. I was like, "No oh, man, we got to save this culture and history." Or something that happened. So I got down there, and after a couple of visits, I realized I can make this work. That's how I got it. It's amazing, and just the flavors that open up on this again. Just as I'm listening to the story, 
the chocolates there, the, the barrel, the fruit. As you mentioned, even olives. I haven't really hadn't thought about olives, but I do get that now. The olives are there. There's layers in this cigar, man. I've never had any. Just remarkable. I love it. I love yeah. it. It's, it's really so good. good. There's nothing to compare it against. And like I said, after three decades of smoking cigars, it's, it's just nothing to compare it against. There's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing that you could say, hey, this tastes like A, B, or C. It's an experience that you need to do on your own. When you do finally smoke these, I highly suggest do it on a clean palate. Have a little bit of something simple next to you, even before you go to the drink, like seltzer water yeah. or something entirely clean palate. And then you're really going to get to experience something, like I said, that there's nothing out there that's quite like it. So the uniqueness of this is, is the thing that, that, that's just so cool. And then you heard about the history and how it gets done. So think about everything that's gone into just being able to come out and create this stick, right? Let me add this too, Manny. Because you've got that dark fire tobacco in there, some people might think, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming with that fire smoke, aroma and flavor. Not so. It's in there, but it's more subtle. And you've got all these other flavors that are contributing. It's not dominated and overwhelmed by the smoke. That's critical because if it were, it wouldn't work with the balance. Yep. When you get to, to have that is a more subtle element in this complex blend. It's not overpowering the other flavors, and that's very important. So when you that's when you use bougie words like it's a melange of flavors, right? Because it, it is. is a melange, it is, right? Right. You see that? See, I I know some bougie words. And, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and the, right. There's nothing at all in this that takes over anything in the cigar. Right, and the, that's part of the magic, right there. You don't want anything that takes over. You know, there's nothing that's a proprietary taste that knocks out anything else in the cigar, and that's you know that's a big deal. That's a big deal. You know, elements to it, and all of them add to the final product, and you know that, that all comes together perfectly. All, all those hands on it, and again, if if only uh, Pappy himself could have smoked this. See, he's smoking a cigar there. I don't know what kind that is. We could probably ask. Uh, someone from the family. Do you know what kind of cigars you used to smoke, by the way, Mark? I'm not sure if I know. Oh, that would be a good question. That's Preston or one of the folks there. Uh, what are you used to smoke? Julian or the sisters to, to find Should out have... that answer. Yeah, but I think he would have really enjoyed this. If Brandon's big with this cigar, he'd be very proud. Yeah, no, this is this is something everyone's proud of. And again, uh, I'm lucky to have just a little bit left in this bottle. I'm pairing it with, no matter what you're pairing it with, it's perfect with all kinds of bourbons and cocktails. I've tried it with so many. It is, it's dynamite with the rye, you name it, a great old fashioned. Uh, take one more moment, folks, uh, as we wrap this up. Like this, share this. In a moment, we're going to pick that number of who wins that coffee from uh, Janice Coffee Roasters and, uh, and go on to this link, bourbonblog.com forward slash coffee to uh, experience the Janice Coffee Roasters uh, bourbon blog coffee. Uh, delicious, delicious pairing as well for the um, cigar. Okay, looks like we had uh, 40, 40 people, 40 people exactly sharing, liking this, picking over between one and 40, Mark. Uh, 37. 37. All right, 37 is our friend uh, John Luke on Twitter. Thank you for I'm Luke. John. Thanks for sharing that, John, on Twitter, and we'll keep on doing more of these and uh everybody uh tell us down below again whether it's live or later uh if you've tried this cigar how you like it we love this mark it's it's such a pleasure to see you again and you have uh how much do you have another day left there at the in chicago or oh, we got another day tomorrow we got another big show day with all the pipe guys and we got carvers from all over the world again which is remarkable you know with COVID, and we're so excited to be back together well, it's just like at the cigar events. When you're in the when you're smoking, back home we're pariahs. You get together with people that like cigars and like pipe tobacco, man. It's like the, the camaraderie is palpable. Yeah. yeah. And much needed, brother. Much needed. We had a good time. And more barn smokers coming up, Maddie, right? What's the next one? We got it, babies. We got Pennsylvania that's coming up in, uh, in July. Then we have Kentucky coming up. And we have Connecticut coming up. And, of course, we have... We have the Savage Feast in Texas, so I know I know we're making sure we drag Mark out to those. So, Mark, there's no rest for the wicked. Mark's going to get dragged out, and Tom, we'll, we'll see you then. Like I said, Thank we're you. happy to get everybody else back out there. Um, there's still a couple of tickets left to each of those events. Um, I said it once, and I'll say it a million times. If it's something that you've never done before, 
come and check it out for your first event so you could really learn. And if you have done it before, there's nothing I need to explain to you. Uh, we know you want to be there. That's right. Thanks so much, fellas. Thanks. Really appreciate Thanks. It. Great seeing you, Mark. Thanks for taking some time and, and joining us tonight on Cigar Saturday. Great to see you, Maddie. Great to see you too, Sanj, back there. All right. Take care. See you again Bye. soon. Bye. Cheers, Bye. everybody. Much love. Bye. Take care. Cheers. Thanks.